Let's go up front. Right, I'm sitting right here. Mecca for party. Yeah. Let's see one of Oh, straight up money. I don't know why. He buys my No access to that. It's like, okay, I don't see that, that side of it. Yeah. I think enough, but not everyone. Digital Garage 717. There's some organizers in the back. You want to give them a round of applause? We're very thankful for them as always. They're one of our sponsors up the front top there. The other sponsors we have, of course, uh, Wax and PR. Uh, they're a PR firm out of New York. Uh, they sponsor a lot of uh, big Bitcoin companies you've probably heard of uh, Kraken, Purse, etc. They are one of our biggest supporters. We're really thankful to everything they do for us. And then, of course, CoinSource. They do Bitcoin ATMs. You actually might have seen some around the city. I think they have like three or four here now. And uh, globally, of course, many more. And then also Dash. Dash has been uh, really doing a great job. Giving back to the community, they really want to support us. They really want to help foster the space. So we're very thankful for all the support they've given us as well. With that, um, just one last reminder about the lightning talks. It's the clipboard over there. After uh, Martin is done, you, if your name's on the list, I'll call you up. You'll get one minute to just talk about a project or mention, hey, I want to talk about X topic. Uh, come find me, and, and then we'll run through those really quick. That'll be after the q and I'm going to go ahead and just hand, get this thing started and hand over to Martin Davidson. Uh, he is from a Melbourne, uh, Melbourne uh, Bitcoin Blockchain Center. Sorry, a couple just tries. Just Blockchain Center. Blockchain Center. We'll get into that. As well. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to talk about the community. He's going to talk about what they're doing. Uh, it's a really great chance for, uh, if you guys have any questions, there's a lot of new faces here. We're going to do an extended Q&A session. So please, a uh, big round of applause. Welcome up, Martin. Hello everyone, how are you tonight? Good? Excellent, excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold. I um, took um, the big bus, the tourist bus, and it was on the top deck there and didn't appreciate how uh, cold it would get. And um, what we've been in New York for the last sort of week and having bad jet lag, I've, I've got myself into a bit of a state because obviously the time difference is the opposite time over in Melbourne, Australia. And um, uh, I've been kind of organising an event for Andreas Antonopoulos from afar as well, so he's going to be speaking um, Wednesday evening at the uh, Blockchain Centre. There's over 250 people RSVP for that, so that's pretty much our biggest event to date uh, for the Blockchain Centre. So uh, we've actually got the, the Blockchain Centre up there now. So, cool. So I guess um, <coughs> who's, here, who's uh, new here tonight? Who hasn't been to one of these events before? So, okay, cool, like about 60%. Congratulations, nice one. Welcome. <coughs> Welcome to the crazy Bitcoiners. Uh, be careful about going down the rabbit hole, so to speak, as they call it. Um, watch this space. So I guess um, I'll just talk a little bit about, I haven't really prepared anything, so I'll just give a little bit of summary of how I got into the space and uh, what we've been up to over the last few years. So, um, 20, end of, uh, oh, start of 2014, um, um, I'd been into trading shares a little bit and um, also buying gold. So I'd actually buy physical gold from a, a gold dealer and then put that in a safety deposit box. And I started to become interested in, you know, money and wealth and, you know, maybe trying to kind of create more of it for myself because I've travelled around the world a, a lot and had not really sort of thought about my financial future too much. So um, I'm, I'm from the UK, by the way, but I live in Melbourne. I've been there 12 years. So. Um, a friend of mine at work, had sort of, we were talking about share trading and gold investments, 
and he had just made fifty thousand dollars on Litecoin. Um, so I thought, well, that's quite interesting. Um, I wonder how you how they managed to do that. So um, from a little while later, I found out about a Litecoin, obviously, and then I started to learn about Bitcoin. And I thought, this is really interesting. You know, where does money come from? What creates money? How, why does it have value? All these types of questions. Um, so I thought, this is really um, quite an amazing technology. And um, I've always kind of um, thought that there should be more freedom and equality in the world. And why some people in some parts of the world don't have access to certain financial services and opportunities as opposed to other parts of the world. And I thought this potentially, on the face of it, this technology could be a great enabler or very freedom enabling for people that don't have access to any financial services whatsoever. Obviously the internet is being penetrated around the world now, smartphones are coming down in price. You know, there might be an opportunity for everybody to get access to you know, a digital store of value or something that they can transact with the rest of the world. So that was kind of you know, my initial thoughts about it. And I thought um, I'd always wanted to have my own business. So um, I left my job um, and I thought um, retail adoption, that's what Bitcoin needs. People need to understand that you know, um, for, for merchants to accept it, whether they be bricks and mortar stores or whether it be online merchants, this is a great um, opportunity for people to benefit from um, using Bitcoin. You know, when tourists come to Melbourne, you know, they, they might be from the States, they might have some Bitcoin in their wallet, they can then spend it in a, in a shop, they don't have to do the currency, they don't get stung by these foreign exchange um, places. And uh, I actually had an experience in Times Square, actually last week, where somebody tried to charge me like 30% on the exchange rate uh, to change a couple of hundred dollars or something. After we negotiated, it ended up being like 10% or something. But, you know, that's... Um, Anyway, let's not, let's not get into that. So, um, so soon after um, creating a website and buying an ATM machine and creating some, um, some marketing material, a co-working space opened in Melbourne called the Melbourne Bitcoin Technology Centre in November 2014. And it just so happened that I was ready to go to market with my, with my product. Um, so I went along to the centre and um, met the founder, Sam Lee, who, who I now work with. Um, and he said, yeah, sure, come grab, grab a desk and set up your ATM machine and, you know, welcome to the community. So, um, uh, up six months later, I kind of established, well, soon after that, I thought, well, to grow the community, what do we need to, what are, what are some of the things we need to do? So, so meetups, obviously, community meetup groups, um, education workshops, these are some of the things that are obviously beneficial for people to come and learn about the technology. I, I sort of, um, you know, dove right into learning about how does Bitcoin work, you know, what, what is a, what is a public-private key, what is proof of work, what is the consensus algorithm, um, you know, how, how did it all come about, where did it come from, you know, what's a, what are the, um, you know, what's the history behind it, because these are all like really quite important things to understand, if you know where the history of Bitcoin, uh, what led to its kind of creation, then um, you know it helps to kind of understand like what now is maybe being touted as something that's revolutionary, maybe is is is, is not so much. So um, I thought it was really important for everybody to understand that wanting to learn about the space, to learn about Bitcoin first of all, and um, you know how it is the blockchain for value transfer, and then sort of go from there. Um, so six months after being in the space, I actually got an offer for my ATM business, which was great. And I was glad that I trademarked the name because um, somebody thought that that was pretty cool, um, which is a good thing because it wasn't really making too much money. A lot of people, they tend to buy Bitcoins using an online exchange. Although some parts of the world, you know, you can make money from Bitcoin ATM machines. Um, you know, it depends on the demographic <coughs> of the types of people that are wanting to buy and, uh, and use the Bitcoins. Um, but what we found in Australia is the exchanges, uh, online exchanges tend to sort of offer um, a more liquidity for people. Um, and then when you're running an ATM business, there's obviously the cash handling that, you know, the, the time that's spent, you know, taking the money and banking it. And, you know, there's the risk to that as well and things like that. Not to say it's a bad business model everywhere, but it just didn't work for me. So um, Sam, who is the founder of the space, said, we're going to do an IPO, the world's first Bitcoin mining IPO. Um, and uh, with mining operations in China, we want to be the world's first to list. Um, however, um, we'd help, we could do with some help with sort of um, selling to investors or sort of, you know, getting, um, um, getting more people onto the, 
on to, to subscribe to the IPO. So I said, yeah, great, I'd, I'd, I'd love to help you. I just sold the business and um, I thought it was a great opportunity. So um, so I guess like um, sort of moving forward, we, we didn't manage to list on the ASX. We had some regulatory hurdles. I mean, the regulator um, obviously is looking at consumer protection first and foremost, and um, they just saw that it was a bit of a risky proposition. Um, and also understanding Bitcoin mining, it's quite an esoteric thing to understand for a regulator. They're always going to be uh, on the side of caution. But it was a great learning experience for us. And then although we didn't manage to list on the ASX initially, um, what it did do is bring in more exposure to us and then brought in some people from the um, sort of uh, the incumbent financial institutions, um, so people involved in, in the investments, um, to try to give us more advice about how to grow the business. So after we um, we withdrew from the application to list, um, I looked around and I thought, well, rather than sitting on my hands, um, you know, it'd be great if we could kind of upgrade the quality of the space of the Melbourne Bitcoin Technology Centre. So um, went about putting up a. Um, a large nine-page Satoshi white paper in the in the corridor as you come into the centre. So it's like an art and educational piece. And we got some uh, a graffiti artist to come in, um, who he did some really awesome, unique uh, Bitcoin uh, graffiti around the centre as well. Um, we um, put in a mining museum, so we now have like um, old mining hardware in this one room. We also have a Bitcoin full node and a miner set up. Um, we have an event space, a pool table, so um, just try to make the, the centre a really unique experience, not only to be able to connect corporates, um, government, primary schools, high schools, second um, university internship programmes, basically all of society to be able to come and learn about the ecosystem and the technology, but for it to be primarily a, um, a, a space that's focused on education, co-working and community events. So that's really the mandate of the not-for-profit, which is the Blockchain Centre. And then it's supported by Blockchain Global, um, who does who's done the Bitcoin mining operations. We also run an exchange, and then we also do corporate consulting through our management consulting division, which is Blockchain Consulting Group. Um, so, um, so yeah, where are, where are we today? Well, like, I mean, I'm here primarily because um, we were invited as part of an Austrade delegation. So there was a conference on in New York um, just last week called Consensus. It's the world's largest Bitcoin blockchain conference. It's run by a, a, a publication called CoinDesk. And uh, this year was the largest ever. It was held at Times Square in the, in the Marriott Marquis or Marquis Hotel. And um, two and a half thousand people there. So it was pretty epic. Um, so Australia was the only country to actually send a delegation of which Blockchain Centre, Blockchain Global and a few other businesses in the ecosystem went along. We were invited to go, so that was great. And um, yeah, it was a great opportunity for us to kind of meet and network and uh, sort of, um, you know, find out about opportunities in the space, how we might be able to collaborate with um, our respective businesses. And um, yeah, so that was, a, that was a great opportunity. And so I've actually on holiday now, um, so uh, but Bitcoin has been, been been my life. So I kind of I'm always uh, finding myself talking about Bitcoin wherever, wherever I go. Um, so um, so yeah, I'm just here for till tomorrow, and then I'll have to meet some family. Um, so with with the success we've had with blockchain centres, and this is what I've been saying to people at the, at the, at the conference, um, was we're looking to establish blockchain centres around the world now. So we've already had in, in, interest from Invest Hong Kong, which is a government department uh, which helps startups set up in Hong Kong. They have a business park called Cyberport. Um, so we're looking at, um, my colleague Sam's over, over there in the next few days to look at uh, um, some premises there. And then also the UK Department of Investment and Trade are interested in having a blockchain centre there. And then through my trip here in, in the States, we've had a lot of other interest from um, uh, Bank of Chile, um, Iceland, uh, Qatar, people from all over the world are interested in what we're doing. So, um, so yeah, I mean, some of the things that we've been working on as well is um, Sam and a girl called uh, Simone has basically written a crypto poetry book called Blockchains for Jess. Um, so if you're interested in sort of getting a copy of that, it's a fun way for kids and parents who like to learn about uh, Bitcoin and all, like, the other implementations, cryptocurrencies, so it's a bit of fun. Um, and then also... Um, you know, if you go online, you can obviously find out what, we, what we've been doing there as well. Um, if you
you want to scroll down a little bit, am I okay for time or? Okay, cool. So if you scroll down there, just keep keep going, keep going, yeah, keep going, cool. So yeah, we've got like about sixteen hundred for blockchain Melbourne, sixteen hundred community members, and we do a monthly event, a big one, and then we do a, a Bitcoin blockchain one hundred and one workshop that I've been doing for three years, and we also do an Ethereum one hundred and one workshop, which is run by a guy called Tom Nash, and he's the front end developer for an organisation called We Trust, which is using Ethereum platform for lending circles, and they recently did a, a, a sort of a crowd fund. Um, but if we scroll down, keep scrolling down, yeah, so this is a little bit about the space, so there's some Bitcoin artwork there, um, so keep scrolling down, keep scrolling down, there's uh, more Bitcoin artwork, so Toshi's bar there, so there's a, a barbecue balcony area there. We've got a, a, a podcast studio, an event space for up to 60 people, keep scrolling down there, we can keep going, so this is a really reasonable rate, so if any of you are in Melbourne or you want to come to Melbourne, please, you know, come and, come and drop by and use our desk, uh, use our space. And these are some of the members, yeah, so just that's, that's fine, just there. So Blockchain Global, um, Blockchain Consulting Group's Corporate um, Consulting. Get Paid in Bitcoin allows you to basically easily have some of your um, wages paid in Bitcoin. Brave New Coin, the head office there, so they do great um, industry insights, but they supply um, APIs to traders that want to know what is the real price of Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of the other um, cryptocurrencies that are being traded, because it's quite a liquid market. How do you know, um, you know, which exchange to use as the price? So they have some really good um, software there that allows them to aggregate the price. ACX is our Bitcoin exchange, and we also supply liquidity to the retail Bitcoin exchanges. Uh, Blockchain EDU Foundation um, basically does education programs for primary and the secondary schools. Uh, Mango Markets is a Venezuelan Bitcoin exchange that's going to go live soon, um, and then you know I won't go through all of them, but there's some really awesome. Um, and startups in the space, and uh, we find that the ecosystem is really blossoming. So, so yeah. So I think that's probably wrap it up there. So I just want to say a big shout out to Mad Bitcoins. Yeah, because we have been pretty much um, producing awesome content for pretty much three years now, and it's been. Um, I, I kind of when I first got involved in, in Bitcoin. I sort of was searching online and, and you know, looking for different content and stuff. And aside from all the technical stuff, the um, you know the, um, the sort of journalism and media content that's put out because there's a there's a lot of rubbish out there now. But Tom has really stayed true to the ethos of Bitcoin and had some really um, he's grown a really awesome community there. And it's really great to see the World Crypto Network getting um, a lot of followers now. And um, sort of they've done so many awesome interviews as well. So. Um, I kind of put some of my success and sort of passion around the industry to thought leaders like Tom and the people that he has on the World Bitcoin Network because it's and they do it all for the love of, of the industry as well. So uh, thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, cool. So we're going to do a Q and A. If anybody wants to ask a question, we can see some hands. Always the first time. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. What's uh, your name? Eric. Eric. Hello, Eric. Nice to meet you. Uh, you just mentioned that Exchange in Venezuela, uh, are, they, uh, getting, are they using their tensions with the banks there and the government? Sure, so that would be a question for Alejandro, who's the CEO of uh, Mango Markets. Um, so, so, yeah, he'd be his best position to answer questions. So, I don't actually. Um, sort of manage any of these startups here. I work for Blockchain Global as a business development director, so I'm ac across most of the things that are happening in the space. But the individual, like the the sort of more intricate details of the business um, uh, structure, you would best be um, just send Alejandro an email. Thank you. No uh, problem. Second question: uh, What's going on in Australia with the government? I heard they're going to be uh, legalizing digital currencies uh, in one respect. Yeah, sure. So uh, digital currencies were never illegal, but the tax treatment of uh, Bitcoin um, in Australia since, I think, 2014 has been that it's an intangible asset subject to capital gains and it's also double GST. So if you're a retailer in Australia and you accept Bitcoin payment for a cup of coffee and then you exchange that Bitcoin uh, so for dollars, Australian dollars, in Australia, then you're liable to pay another GST, which is good service tax. Um, which is like 
So really, if the only way to make it so you're not out of pocket if you're a retailer accepting Bitcoin is to charge an additional 10% because the $4 that you pay could be charged for coffee would include 10% GST. We do it a bit differently in, in Australia. You don't have to worry about adding the tax on top when you buy something in Australia. Uh, same as the UK, I, I noticed that as well. So um, over here in the States, because I've, I've never been to the States before, so that was a learning for me. So there's been a lot of lobbying going on by organisations such as Fintech Australia, um, ADCA, which is the Australian Digital and Currency and Commerce Association, also uh, the Blockchain Association of Australia, lobbying the government, speaking to senators, listen, you know, to make the laws that you've got around the classification of money and how Bitcoin's being treated is probably not good for the, um, you know, the, the, the space to blossom and to kind of, um, you know, help, help with innovation. Um, in, in Bitcoin and blockchain. Um, so there's been a lot of great work being done behind the scenes. And so now the decision's been made come 1st of July, I think it is, that the GST, the double GST component will be removed from the treatment of, of digital, I think it's Bitcoin, but it may include other digital currencies as well. Um, which will mean that if you're a retailer, you can accept Bitcoin for a good or service and not be penalized for exchanging that um, for local currency. So it's gonna be treated as money and the ATO have had to update their classification of what is money, because which I think hasn't been done since the 70s. So, you know, Bitcoin and blockchain technology is obviously posing a lot of questions of the regulators, and you know they need to obviously be able to put something into a uh, into a into a bucket of what how it's classified, and now they're having to kind of re rejig their classifications. Thanks so much for being here. I actually have a question regarding your involvement in the ATM space and why was it you felt that that service wasn't functional or profitable that you chose to uh, discontinue that side of your business? Sure, okay. Um, so, I mean, it's going to large, from my understanding, it really depends on the, on the sort of location as well. So I know that there are ATM network providers that are doing really well. Um, what I found personally is you've got the cost of the machine, the hardware, so I bought a project Skyhook uh, which was done by a developer called Carl Drake uh, from a um, uh, place based in Portland, Oregon in the northwest. Thousand dollars, nine hundred and ninety nine US dollars. It was great, it worked fine. It was, I did struggle with it a little bit. I, I'm not a developer and um, so I, I had a developer friend help me um, with the configuration of it at times. Um, so you've got the cost of the machine straight away, and then how are you going to make back the cost of the machine? Then you know you need to charge a spread on the exchange, and then also it didn't have an auto buy rebuy feature on it at that time. So when people would buy the bitcoins, they were essentially buying bitcoins from me, um, and then I was then having to manually then uh, rebuy from an exchange. So there's that risk as well of the volatility. Um, but then also, I mean, exchanges, online exchanges are able to charge a much lower rate. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not too sure what all of the exchanges here in, in America charge, but um, traditionally you're looking at maybe sort of one or two percent, most exchanges maybe less. So, um, if you think about the amount of volume or transactions you need to do in order to repay the cost of the machine, which is a thousand dollars, in order to get that back, to, to cover that, um, and then also on top of that, you've got the, you know, running costs and you know, any salaries that there might be, marketing, etc. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, maybe to do it at scale, it's, it's, it's possible to make money from it, but you just have to appreciate the, and people obviously like the anonymity part of it. So if you were registered with an exchange, you need to give over you know, 100 points of ID, your, K, your KYC, you know your customer stuff. And so they, um, because they're handling money, they, they need to keep all those details. So. Some people like to do a peer-to-peer -peer cash transaction, so a lot of people use local bitcoins, and I know a lot of the exchange operators they also advertise on local bitcoins. Um, so you do a cash transaction, and you know that's uh, relatively anonymous, I guess. Um, but there's obviously a charge for that. A lot of people they they're not too worried about being anonymous when they use bitcoins, so um, they're happy to use an exchange. And yeah, so did that answer your question? So, answer, thank you. okay, cool. <laughs> Cheers. Martin, two questions over here. Okay. Hi. Hey, uh, any highlights from the conference in New York and uh, seeing New York for the first time? Sure. Well, yeah, they were both uh, um, 
It was uh, it was a good, having never been to New York before, and uh, what with it being kind of like hyped up in my own mind, sort of being subject to sort of American sort of media over over my whole life. It was larger than life and as I expected, and the conference was larger than life as well. So um, there was a lot of projects there, um, a lot of marketing people there. Um, so I'm not a developer, but I do appreciate all the hard work that goes into the space from the development community. I mean, without without developers, it wouldn't exist, right? So, um, and there are some um, developers that are um, uh, uh, pragmatic with their approach to the technology and its limitations and its you know capacity issues, and um, um, and there's. There's a lot of people that are really looking at the opportunity, not just with the Bitcoin blockchain, but you know all of the other types of cryptocurrencies or blockchain implementations out there. So, I mean, um, I, I, I wear this uh, Bitcoin pin. Uh, we have these made up, and so most of the members of Blockchain Global Management Team, we have one of these uh, Bitcoin pins, a little gold Bitcoin pin. And um, people, a couple of people actually came up to me, oh, you're a Bitcoin maximalist, and so what do you think of you know X, Y, Z? Um, and ICOs and some of these newer, newer um, um, sort of startups in the space, or you know, newer projects, shall we say? And it's kind of, um, you know, not being a developer, I have to rely on you know people that have been, I've been following in the space for quite some time that tend to be quite pragmatic with their approach, and um, I think it's important to kind of um, make sure people's claims are being tested. And that it's peer reviewed as well. And a lot of the projects out there, are, I feel, that aren't really being properly peer reviewed. And there's an opportunity for people to get into the space that are just looking at making money from the space, uh, for maybe investing into projects that maybe aren't going to bring a lot of real world utility and efficiencies. And you know, I I, I, I got involved in Bitcoin because I thought it was a great um, a tool for um, you know people being connected to financial. Um, financial world using Bitcoin, but blockchain for value transfer. Now, a lot of these ideas that are out there are kind of quite far removed from that idea. And the question I would ask, and many people in the space that that, that do like to question um, the underlying technology, is what's why do you need a blockchain? Why do you need a decentralized application to solve this real world problem? So, and this is something that will obviously come out in the in the, in the wash over time. Um, so, so yeah, it's a really nuanced space, and ultimately, it's a socio-economic experiment. No one knows really what the future is going to bring, and um, it's really, uh, yeah, I feel really privileged to be part of it and make my small contribution. But I'll just be really careful um, to anyone that's looking at investing. Just like any investment, just only invest what you could afford to lose, and just bear in mind that a lot of this technology is is very unregulated, and um, as much as things can go up high in price very quickly, they can also and crash back down very quickly as well. So just just be really careful. And I would always advocate for learning about their fundamental technology first. Read the white paper. Understand what proof of work is. Understand you know about the fundamentals of Bitcoin first before you start looking at some of the other blockchains that that, that are out there. Thank you. Hi there. Hi. What's your name? Melanie. Hello, Melanie. How are you? Good. Cool. Um, my question has to do with um, with something you mentioned, to get paid in Bitcoin uh, earlier. Um, I, I work for Ernst & Young, and I've asked them to, to give me 20% of my salary in Bitcoin. Uh, it was met with a bit of resistance, uh, which, which wasn't surprising. Um, I was wondering, is, is it possible, or do you have a suggestion to how to approach an employer, big, like a big corporation like Ernst & Young or a big bank, um, and get them uh, to Sure, sure, sure. So get paid in Bitcoin is not my business, but I do actually sit on the board of Blockchain Association Australia, uh, of which Adam Porton is the president. Um, so he is the um, CEO and founder of Get Paid in Bitcoin. And um, so, I mean, just click on click on their website and then send them an email. Um, he's a really lovely guy. Um, but the way it is in Australia is you're actually, you know, you shouldn't be met with any resistance if you want to have some of your salary diverted to another account. It's really easy to set up. So basically, that's what they do. They just make it really easy uh, for employees to basically just have some of their wages directed to the Get Paid in Bitcoin exchange account, and then they would do the conversion for you straight away. And it's just a really easy way of just being able to save part of your salary in Bitcoin. So again, it depends on like 
what the, the, the payroll regulations are over here. And, but in Australia, you can nominate, I know you can nominate at least two bank accounts to have some of your wages paid into. And it's basically not really up to your employer to kind of um, question that. So that's how it is in Australia, so, yeah. Okay, no problems. Yeah, that one's not, uh, that's Australia only. I also know another company called Bitwage, which works out of here, yeah. Uh, question, who's next? Oh. Okay, that's good. Okay, brilliant, All right. okay, well, cool. All right, so um, everyone please, uh, huge round of applause for Martin. You just go ahead and line up over here and we'll call you up. And after that, we still have lots of air left and the piece is gone, but we have, we're here for a uh, couple hours still. Uh, if you see anybody interesting, we can start talking to you. So let's get started. I have my first up today. You wanna go ahead and go? Great. Um, my name is Daya Baran. I'm building a uh, derivatives platform for uh, Bitcoin specific specifically. I used to be a derivatives trader for on uh, EYSC. I'm a specialist on Apple. Um, the reason I think this is necessary is because the professional money is only getting into Bitcoin now. That's not even started. I believe it's going to be massive. It's going to be like F massive. And the reason is because companies and corporations are realizing that, that they, they need to get around the fiat money. Like, you know, companies like Apple and Google. By the way, I work for Google right now. So I, this is just different to what I do at Google. Um, the, these, uh, these companies that are making massive amounts of money, they realize they need to hedge their money in different ways and get around regulations, whatever it may be. And, and then there's, there's the investors, and I, I believe it's going to be a huge market. So I'm a developer on the regular iOS and website, but I know nothing about Bitcoin. I mean, I know, you know blockchain. So if you're a developer in that area, uh, please come see me because I'm in the process of raising a round and I'll be uh, happy to get your resume going. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Next up we have Neil. Thanks, Travis. Thanks, Martin. My name is Neil Passero and I'm really intrigued by the idea of applying blockchain in business to business sales and marketing environments specifically around the area of managing reputations of both buyers and sellers. Has anybody here ever sold something to somebody else who they wish they maybe hadn't done that? I think that there's applications for managing reputation to help buyers sell, uh, sell sellers sell to great buyers and buyers buy from great sellers. It's a big gap in the marketplace and I'd love to meet anybody that's technical, business, uh, and interested in that type of concept. All right, thanks. Thank you, Neil. How's it going guys? My name is Adrian. I'm a local native photographer and graffiti artist from uh, the Bay Area. I just wanted to come out here and really uh, open my doors up to the uh, crypto community. I work with a lot of uh, brands and uh, corporate companies out here, like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and all of them. And I have a bunch of social influencers that I work with and also I am myself a social influencer. So. I thought it would be a great idea. I was invited here by Terry. He invited me here and just so I wanted to collaborate with you guys and open my door to work with you and also bring new people into here so we can like warm them up, share them with the ideas of what's going on so people can get more involved and you know ease up to what the Bitcoin is all about. Cash. It's a crypto dollar wallet, and um, you know we're in beta. And one of our first use cases is to help uh, newer people get into Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other cryptocurrencies. Uh, so we just uh, have an alternative way of doing it. That's you know where you don't have to go through KYC, AML. Uh, it's kind of like local Bitcoin, but we're trying to foster this this peer to peer. Uh, these peer-to-peer -peer transactions amongst people and just try to get people uh, you know, into cryptocurrencies a lot more um, easily. So I just, just a show of hands, like how many people are really new to kind of cryptocurrency and 
are in this audience. Like, so there's still quite a number. So yeah, please we're looking for beta testers. So please uh, reach out to me after this. Uh, Thanks, Jim. All right. Hey, one question. So this wallet. So do we need different wallets for different currencies, or one wallet can have all the currencies? No, no. It, it's it's uh, it's a bridge wallet. So it's it's dollar based. So you can think of it in terms of dollars and exchanging dollar for dollars for big cash, and you use the big cash to trade into Bitcoin, Ethereum, and others. So there's another uh, part of the application where you, you trade into other currencies. And, and June will be around for further questions as well. All right, Alex. Hello guys, my name is Alex and I help run MBSA, uh, the most experienced blockchain development house who's built Tether, Krona Bank, TAS, uh, a bunch of other projects. So if you guys need a hand with a blockchain developer, Solidity Engineers, uh, come talk to me. Thank you. Thanks Alex. First thing I have to say is, man, this is an amazing community you guys have in San Francisco. I'm Sheldon myself. <laughs> the first uh, fully regulated Bitcoin ATM operation in North America. Our first ATM went in February of 2014 in Austin, Texas, doing some phenomenal numbers. Coin Vault ATM has evolved, utilizing full AML KYC compliance requirements. We were audited by the federal government. Uh, basically, if you ever had a microscope such stuff all the way up your ass, that's kind of the experience you might get. We came out of that audit with a completely clean report, basically, with no findings. At the same time, Ripple got fined $700,000, so we were freaking out at that time. And I'm here today really just to come and explore the idea, the possibility, the evolution of this technology, and we can discuss, that's a whole other subject about what you want to do with AML and KYC, and are you going to make it legal? I can afford three mils and a cot. I'm not going to end up like Charlie Schramm did, just selling Bitcoin to people. We run what's being defined in the last three weeks as the gateway to the blockchain. Coin Vault ATM is gonna open up its backend platform to allow people, developers like yourselves, that may have a solution uh, application that you're looking for a front end or a back end to allow consumers to access whatever it looks like. Professor, uh, Professor Elizabeth Jones from the University of Texas in Arlington claims that what we're providing is this defined as the gateway to the blockchain because it's how do you get the last mile and how do you get to the first mile to allow the consumer to either get in the network or get out of the network. And in our phase two development, we're processing multiple currencies. All right. Okay, thank you guys. Thanks, Alvin. Hi everyone, my name is Frank Wong, uh, founder of uh, Stentor Technology. So we are a blockchain company uh, building the fundamental technology around blockchain and, uh, and enterprise software. So uh, previously I worked for JP Morgan Chase and also helped build uh, Google Transit. So a lot of people come here, including myself, you know, using Google Transit every day. And uh, we just recently uh, got some money from our angel round. So I'm here just trying to network with people. We are looking for business development gurus and tech gurus uh, to join us. And uh, hopefully uh, we are going to be on uh, another road show uh, in Asia you know, next month so we can go together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, letting me talk to you guys. My name is Mike Newman. I'm with a company called Rocky. And uh, I just have a quick question. How many people here uh, do Bitcoin mining? You should, I, I'm just trying to get an idea. And, uh, okay, that was that was it. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Hi, I'm Melanie. Um, last name Marcelier. It's a bit French, so I just do Melanie Blockchain in San Francisco, and I'm I'm pretty sure I'm going to be the only one. Um, I work at Ernst and Young, and we have two digital lab, two digital labs, one in San Francisco, one in San Jose. Um, I'm a blockchain consultant, so I do uh, blockchain for enterprise full time. Uh, but I just want to say that we're here um, and we're working on cool stuff. So if you if you have your own business in Bitcoin blockchain as an exchange or uh, whatever is your business, we're we're starting to uh, to offer auditing services. And if you have a cool idea, you 
maybe you don't need uh, an auditing uh, uh, aspect to your uh, your project, but for something else, uh, we can also uh, provide a lot of advisory services uh, when it comes to blockchain. So Melanie, blockchain San Francisco, and you should find me. Thank, Thank you. you. So, uh, we have a platform for uh, security, uh, so if any one of you guys need to secure your application with us, like in the Bitcoin space, come into the point. Thanks. Remind everybody again, we have lots of beer still, we're here till uh, close to nine, so uh, please, mingle around and enjoy. Thank you so much for coming out. Oh, uh, real quick. Hi hey everyone, um, I, I, I'm not long here tonight though, because um, I, I need to shoot off, but if anyone wants to grab a business card off of me, I've got a stack of food I left over from the conference, and so please feel free to come and grab a business card off me, and uh, thanks very much again for your time.